Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel, Quilt as Inspired. In this video series, Crosscraft Sundays, I want to post a video every Sunday morning so that you can see what I am working on every week, which is always something different. And if, if Sunday isn't for you, that's okay. The, I'm going to post these every Sunday, but just pick a day during the week that you can take time for yourself to, to just not even get dressed. Now, having said that, we still have to look really cute. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do this um, Bohemian Second Day Hair slouch hat that I'm wearing that I wear at least twice a week. Um, it is, it's the greatest hat. If you don't know how to knit, I am going to actually be showing you how to do the cast on, the bind off, the short rows, how to interpret the pattern, um, how to weave in your ends. So it is a comprehensive uh, toot on knitting, beginning knitting, and this is, this is really easy to do. Um, so uh, I hope that you will join me every Sunday next week. I know I'm going to be doing some cross stitching. Um, and uh, who knows what I'll be doing the week after that. I haven't planned it that far out yet. I just know that um, for me, being able to share the techniques that I use, that I learn, that I create, um, makes everything worthwhile so that we can, we can be creative together and make 2017 the most creative year yet. Here's the pattern. Um, it's a little bit different. I, I wrote it out a little bit better for you um, so that you know exactly what a short row pattern will look like when you encounter it in the future. And that is the W and percent T, wrap and turn. So um, here it is. Row one, it says knit 26, wrap and turn. Um, and we'll be talking about that and I'll show you exactly what to do. But when, when you, when I'm referring in the video to each row, then just go ahead and, and refer back to this. You're going to want to do a screenshot. And so if you're on your iPhone or your iPad, when, when, um, the pattern is showing, you'll want to push pause and then hit the start and the reset button at the same time and that will give you a screenshot so that's the home button and like the the little button that turns it off okay you hit those at the same time and you'll hear a little um, camera noise and that is your screenshot so that you have that um, when, when you're look when you're searching for yarn and if you can't get this yarn or maybe you have some stash that you want to use um, substituting yarn is is kind of a a bugger for people um, but I'll tell you the best way to go ahead and, and do that and find something. Um, what you want to make sure that you're using either a wool, merino wool, so it's not itchy at all, or you'll want to use a wool blend. Um, cotton tends to stretch. I love knitting with cotton, but in a hat it's just not appropriate because it'll stretch out and it doesn't have any elasticity or memory to it. So. Try to stay with wool or poly or a blend of, of those two, and it needs to be bulky. We're using a size 11 needle. It can be circular or they can be straight. Um, when you're looking for yarn to substitute, what you want to look for is you want to look for the um, the grams. It'll A lot of patterns will give, you know, here's how many grams you need, but really the most important thing is the yardage. Um, you're going to need about 120 to 130 yards of bulky weight. Now the word bulky can mean so many different things, but in this case, what you're going to look for is a yarn that is 50 grams that contains 56 yards or close to it. So if you're, if you're out shopping or you have some stash, you can also find, um, you know, a hundred gram ball would have a hundred to 112 yards in it. So if you can match the yardage per gram, you will be able to find, and this is true with any pattern, you'll be able to find the appropriate yarn that will give you the correct gauge. Gauge is really important. Um, this is a garter stitch hat, which means it's knit every row. Even though we'll be working short rows, we're actually not doing any sort of purling at all. Um, the pattern is kind of funky. It's giving you, you know, you either cast on um, 30, 31, or 32. I just stick right in the middle with the 31. That seems to fit everybody. The, this hat is knit side to side, so um, you will actually be controlling the the uh, width of your hat by how many rows you do. Um, and since this hat is knit side to side, 
you can actually, um, when you cast on, you can use my favorite cast on in the whole wide world, which is called the cable cast on. You're basically knitting, you're casting on the side of the hat. It is not elastic at all. So for any other hat or the tops of socks or the cuffs of sleeves or anything that you want elasticity in, come to this book right here, Cast On Bind Off by Leslie Ann Bester. There are so many different ways to, to cast on and bind off. It's kind of mind blowing. But for anything that I don't need an elastic band for, I will do a cable cast on, which I'll, which I'll show you next. Okay, so casting on. Now, of course, I, th I think I've mentioned you can use straight or circular needles, um, and you're going to start with a slip knot. So if you've never done a slip knot before, it's really easy. I'll show you how. You're basically just going to make a little loop in your yarn like this. You don't need a long tail. If you're used to the long tail cast on, you don't need that here. Um, whichever loop, whichever part of the loop is, is on top, that is the side that you're just going to take and push up through the hole grab the loop and that's your slip knot. Really super simple. And you know it's a slip knot so when you pull it, the slip knot will come out. And you can do that either way. So let's say that the, the top loop is the, the yarn side, that's fine. Basically just gonna pop that up like a little prairie dog. Comes out, okay, and that's your slip knot. That knot will go on your needle. You can tighten that up a little bit. To work a cable cast on, you're gonna need both needles. Basically what you're going to do, oh gosh, I'm working around this tripod, so hang on. All right. Go into the slip knot with your right needle like you're knitting. Wrap it counterclockwise. Bring it through just like you're knitting. Now here's where it changes. Pull the loop so that it's big enough to go ahead and put on your left hand needle. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it under the needle and on. Hold that loop with your finger, take your needle out and snug it up. Not super tight, just snug, okay? Now, from here on out, you're gonna put your needle in between those two. So for knitting, you would be going just in here, but for cable cast on, you're actually gonna go in between them. Same motion. Wrap your needle counterclockwise. Bring the loop through the needle. So think field goal. Okay. Again, bring your loop out and pop it on your needle. Okay. I've got three stitches. Again, now between the last two. If it feels too tight to get in, it's too tight. You want it snug, but you don't want it like crazy tight where you're struggling. Okay, again, I'm in between those two. Wrapping it. See how I'm coming right between them? It's really straight. You see how my needles are more of a T than an X? If you're forming your needles in too much of an X, it'll feel too much like knitting. What you want is this, and that way, that will be coming straight through those last two stitches on your needle. Again, under, bring it around town and it sort of twists on. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then I'm gonna cast on the rest. I want you to cast on 31 stitches. Okay, field goal, bringing it around. My needles are still in a T so that I can make sure I'm bringing that straight forward. Okay. We're going to dive right into the short row pattern and you might be thinking why short rows what is the deal with that but essentially why you would work a short row is you would want some it is it is so that you can get some shaping to your piece while the piece will still lay flat so you know if you're turning back and forth and you're knitting and you work that, if you turn back and forth without working a short row, basically you're gonna get holes in your knitting and the piece won't lie flat. It'll just kind of buckle up and be funky. So the short row is really essential and it's a lot of people are scared of it, but it's not a big deal. I'm gonna show you how the easiest way to do it with garter stitch, okay? But regular knitting is this. You're gonna transfer all of the stitches from your left needle onto your right needle by knitting into each one. So if you've never knit before, you're going to go into the stitch. Now remember for casting on, we were right between them. But for knitting, we just go into the front stitch. Feels like casting on because you're still wrapping the yarn counterclockwise along your back needle. 
and you're bringing the yarn through instead of pulling that out and towards you this stitch goes off of your left hand needle onto your right. For this first one you can pull it a little bit but try not to get into that habit or your stitching will be really tight. Alright so you're just basically peeling off the stitch. This is knitting. In through the front door, run around the back, peek through the window, off jumps Jack. In through the front door, run around the back, peek through the window, off jumps Jack. So you see it can be, I'm not pulling my yarn at all. Once you kind of get the motion down, it'll seem really awkward at first, but you will be able to fly through your knitting. But first things first, let's learn it. Okay? This is called um, the the American style or the drawing room style. There's continental knitting too, where you know you will see people hold their yarn like this, and you can go into the front door. You're still wrapping it around. Peek through the window. Off jumps Jack. Some people find that a faster way to knit. I actually don't like to knit that way unless I'm using two colors, one in each hand, um, because I don't. I can't seem to get a proper gauge. Uh, my stitching is too loose when I have it that way. Um, so this is the way that I knit, but certainly you can knit this any way you want to. I'm not about to change anybody's knitting style. I think that people are comfortable with the way that they learned, and this is the way that I learned. Okay, so when you're looking at your pattern now, you, you know where it says um, knit 26 and wrap and turn and you'll have five stitches left over. So basically what that means, you have 31 stitches. So, go a little faster for you, get this done. Gosh, I'm on straight needles. I normally am not on straight needles, but I wanted to show you both. I've got a little hat baking in the oven, so um, I can show you what it looks like on circulars too after we do these first couple rows. Plus these needles are super long, drive me crazy. Okay, so here we are at the short row. Now I've knitted my 26 stitches. I've got five left, one, two, three, four, five. You, if you were to just turn the work and start working in the other direction this way, you're gonna have a gigantic hole right here. So in order to avoid that and not let your work buckle, you're gonna do what's called a short row or a WNT or a wrap and turn. Basically in garter stitch, it looks like this. You slip the stitch over purlwise, and all purlwise means when you see that in instructions is that you don't go into the stitch this way. It makes no difference where your yarn is. We're gonna keep it in the back for now because we're knitting, and when we're knitting, the yarn is always in the back. So, slip it purlwise, meaning you're gonna go into the stitch purlwise, okay? Bring your yarn forward between your needles, return that slip stitch back over, Okay, so you've got your five stitches on this side, your 26, and then you're gonna turn the work and go back and stitch in the direction that you were just coming from. And you're safe now because this stitch has a wrap and you won't get that crazy hole. And then I'll show you how to pick up the wrap coming back. So then the next row says knit 16, wrap and turn. Okay, so we're just gonna knit 16, one, okay. Say that little poem to yourself if you're new, in through the front door, run around the back, peek through the window, off jumps Jack. I cannot tell you how many people I taught to knit using that little silly rhyme that is, is so incredibly helpful. Now let's say you are talking or whatever, the phone rings and you've lost your place. And you have to put your needles down and then you, you go to pick them back up and you're not even exactly sure where you are. Well, so the first thing you want to make sure is what row you're on, what side you're on. You want to make sure that the yarn is coming from your right hand needle. If you were to pick it up and go this way again, you're going to get that crazy hole. So, make, so that's first. So now you know which direction you're knitting into because your yarn is coming from your right hand needle. And, but you don't remember how many stitches you've knitted. So what you want to do is come back here and in the short rows in the wrap and turn, you've got a gap. Would you see that little gap in there? the wrap, and then you start counting. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, so we're halfway there. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then just to make sure that you know where you are, you count two, four, six, eight, ten left, as I wrote in the pattern, so you know you're in the right place. Okay, now at the end of that 16, you want another wrap and turn. So it's slip purl wise, bring the yarn in the front, return the slip stitch back over to the left hand needle and turn your work going in the other direction. Okay, and then the next pattern, row, th um, excuse me, the next row, row three is knit 21. So basically that's how many stitches you have left over, but you'll want to pick up the wrap on the 17th stitch. Okay, and you can identify that because it's the one that's on this side of the wrap. You've got your wrap and you've got your gap. And that's, that wrap needs to be picked up. Now when you're working in garter stitch, if you forget to pick that wrap up, it's not a huge deal because in garter stitch, every row will have these bumps. But in stockinette stitch, if you forget, it's a big deal. You will see that little bump right here on the stockinette side, which is supposed to be the smooth side. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. If in this hat, like I said, later on, you forget to pick up the wrap, don't go back and start over or try to take out what you've done because it's just really not a big deal. You're not even gonna see it. Okay, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So, going to your 20, knitting 21. Okay, I'm at that 20, or excuse me, that 17th stitch of my 21 stitches. And you can tell, it feels different. There's a big gap um, on the other side of it and you can see that little, um, funky little wrap that we did. And you want to knit this this wrap together with that stitch. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your needle into the wrap and then you're going to put it into the stitch and you're knitting it going to be, it's going to feel like you're knitting two stitches together. Make sure you come through that wrap, take the stitch off, and then continue till the end of the row. All right, so that's your first three rows. Now row four says knit to the end, picking up the wrap on the 22nd stitch. So it is the exact same thing. You turn it around. Okay, all of this will be knit normally. And the wrap, you can, you can identify it. It's right, here's that gap, and here's that wrap, okay? So you're basically just gonna knit all the way to that 22nd stitch, and you're gonna pick it up. I am to that wrap stitch. But what I want to show you is what if you accidentally blaze right past it and you realize it just a couple stitches away. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to show you how to unknit because that is such an essential skill to learn in knitting. Um, so let's say here's the wrap and I'm cru cruising along and I just realized, oh no, I forgot to pick the wrap up. Again, it's not a huge deal in garter, but if you, you know, if you realize it in time and you want to do it right, um, here's how you go back. To unknit a couple of stitches, what you're going to do is you're going to take your left hand needle and you're going to go into the stitch that the yarn is on. So can you see that? This is the original stitch that was on the left hand needle that goes back up on the left and then this just comes out. Okay, pretty simple. You're basically just taking your knitting and going in reverse. Okay. And let's see, and now I'm at that wrap stitch, so now I can go ahead and do it properly. So you're gonna go in to the wrap, into the stitch, knit them, pull them as they're both, as if you're knitting them together, because you really kind of are, and then take that off and then knit to the end. Okay, and then rows five and six, say knit 26 stitches, so you're basically gonna knit back and forth. Um, one row each, and then I will uh, talk about that is your, your row set, so that there are six rows, which equal a set, okay? Okay, um, so here are my uh, six rows that I worked in short rows, and you can see the shaping that I did right here and right here. The work lies flat and there are no holes in the work and that's why we want to work the short rows. To do the hat, I did 
19 sets of the six rows. Every garter stitch row you do is worth two rows of knitting. So down here you can see, even though I did six sets, I've only got four rows of knitting here because we wrapped and turned here, but I've got one, two, three rows here in the middle. So that's the six rows that I did. Uh, again, I worked 19 sets of six rows, and basically that will get you a hat that will fit a head between 21 and 22 inches. You measure your head by placing a tape measure uh, around your head just above your ears, and that's where you're gonna wanna measure. But 21, 22, that's pretty classic for an adult size head. I have, of course, the Magical Knitter's Oven, where I have already worked, in a different colorway, my 19 rows of six, and I'm ready to bind off, so I wanna show you that. This is the right side, of the piece and I know that because the way that I cast on the cable cast on the tail actually the knitting goes this way so I'll show you the tail is on the left hand side because what happens is you've cast it on this way and row one works this way so anytime you're working an odd row you're going towards your tail if you're working a wrong side row or an even row you're working away from your tail that's really helpful when you're confused on where you are but in, when you're working this hat just try to work six all six rows of your section and then you won't get confused okay these are just my little yarn ends i'm going to show you how to actually add a new ball of yarn and tie it off. I know people say no knots in your knitting. Forget that. I'm a total knotter because I've seen all kinds of people come in when I had the shop with their stuff falling apart because traditionalists say no knots. But what you want to make sure is that you don't cut at the knot. So when you add your new yarn, this is where I added my third ball. I did a little knot, just a double knot. You can tighten it up. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to weave these ends in. Okay, binding off, you don't have to do anything real special even though we've got a short row piece here. You're basically going to just knit two stitches. Keep them loose, don't, don't tighten it up. I've got two stitches on my needle. You're gonna leapfrog the back one over the stitch and off the needle, leaving that one on. If you pull tight right here, you're gonna have a crazy tight cast on. You, you have to make sure that this stays pretty loose. Okay, now that you have the one on there, you're basically just gonna knit one stitch and leapfrog over and off. Knit one, over and off. Because, see how loose I am right here? I'm not pulling this tight. This is staying nice and loose. Okay. Over and off. All right, so go ahead and bind yours off. And then I'm gonna show you how to stitch the two ends together. Okay, so when you've knit your last stitch and you've leapfrogged that last one over, you are still having this one stitch on your needle. So lift up on it. Okay, set your needles aside. Cut yourself a nice long tail because that's the tail you're gonna be stitching your hat up with. Um, so, I don't know, a couple feet, a yard, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just wanna have enough to be able to stitch it together. So I've cut that. Oops, it's tripod. Um, this yarn will come through the knot and snuggy it up just like that. Okay. So when you go to stitch your sides together, you want to make sure that the wrong side, the wrong sides are facing. Okay, thread your sewing needle. And then to sew it up, you're basically just going to pick up this stitch from the outside going in. Pick up the next stitch from the outside going in. I'm really, I'm not 
picking up one stitch, I'm actually picking up the whole entire cast off stitch on that side. And then on this side, just make sure you're picking up two pieces. Okay, and stay consistent. You can pick up these two, or you can dig in here and pick up these two. I'm going to actually do that, go into the knit stitch. Can you kind of see that? It's tweed, so it's a little harder to see. But as long as I'm picking up two and staying consistent, I should be just fine. All right, come back over here. From the outside in, you're picking up these two stitches. Okay, you can see that I'm already in that one. I'm going to come out here. Next ones. What that is? Quilting thread. There's certainly a couple different ways to do this. You could even if you wanted to put the wrong the right sides together and do a whip stitch. This is just kind of a cleaner cleaner version. It goes in the back of the hat and the whole sack part of the hat will cover it. So it's you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal, but just make sure that you find a way to do it and stay consistent. Of course, if you're left-handed, you would just be doing this the other way. And just a note on left-handed knitting. It is I teach all left-handed people that the way I just taught you in this video Knitting is really two-handed. If you try to knit um, in the other direction, uh, you'll have to reverse all the patterns from here on out. So knitting's awkward, no matter right-handed or left-handed. Um, you just have to sort of get used to it, find a way that, that works for you and that feels good. If you are left-handed and you're very, very left-handed, continental knitting might be a better option for you because you have control of the yarn in your left hand. So definitely look into that. Um, that's where you hold the yarn in your left hand. And, um, and and kind of scoop the yarn on. All right, so there it is. There's the, the um, seaming looks pretty good and consistent. That's really the, the main part. So I'm gonna go ahead and seam the rest of it and then I'll show you what to do um, up here where we will gather it so that it actually looks like a sack. Okay, so here's the completed seam running down the center. I've still got my needle on my thread. So what I'm going to do is just turn the hat inside out so I can weave in all my ends. Starting with this. Okay, and then to weave in tails so that they don't come out again, basically you're going to go up, in this case, the seam, and you know which way, a couple inches. It doesn't have to be all the way up. But you see what I'm doing is I'm splitting the stitches. So I'm going to turn this right back in on itself and I'm going to split the actual stitch. Rather than going under it, I'm splitting it. That keeps those yarn tails locked in really nice and tight. All right. And then once you pull the yarn tight, make sure you pull the hat that way. The yarn just fits in there the way that it's supposed to without pulling anything. Okay, and clip it. Oop, gosh, this darn tripod. Um, and that's basically how you're going to run in these stitches as well. Okay, and as promised, I'm going to show you how to add another ball of yarn when you've run out of the first one. So let's just pretend we're out of this yarn. We've got, leave like six inches, six to eight inches left on this side. Essentially, you're basically gonna just go into your stitch, take your new yarn. Okay, again, leave a good six, eight inches, wrap your needle with your new yarn, and then just start knitting with that. Make sure you're knitting with the ball of yarn and not the, the tail. Okay, and I knit a few stitches. Now I'm on the right side here, so what I do is I turn it back around like this. I take these two ends and I tie a double knot. Let's get 
here in the middle. Just snug, not super tight, but snug up. Tie the knot again. And then those are the tails that you'll weave in later like I showed you. Okay, so then once you're done weaving in all the ends, turn the hat so that the right side is out. And take the tail that you started with originally, put it on your needle. And if your tail's too short, of course, you can just use a, a new piece of yarn. This little eight inch piece of yarn is just fine. Okay, and then you're just gonna begin by picking up one garter stitch loop from each row. And then every few stitches or so, just pull it so that you don't run out of yarn. Maybe go back in the beginning just a little bit more just to pull it really tight so there's no hole. And then, um, and then just pull this to the inside of your hat. really tight and then just go and around a couple times and just keep going around the circle closing it up and then weaving it in like I showed you slouch hat complete you're ready for second day hair bohemian fabulousness Thank you again so much for joining me on our very first Cross Craft Sunday. Happy New Year to you.